Hey everybody, let's talk about another design pattern. This time let's talk about the decorator design pattern. The decorator design pattern allows us to have a base component and then decorate that base component with multiple things that we'd like to do. So let's get right into it. Here's a diagram of what we are going to make. So we have a text formatter and this text formatter might be something like a comment on a ticket or a comment on a post. We're going to have a base component, which is just going to return just the plain raw text. And then on top of that, we are going to have a trim decorator, a mention decorator, and a word count decorator. And so the trim decorator is going to, you know, trim the white space off the front and the back. The mention decorator is going to add in a link if someone is mentioned inside the comment. And then the word count decorator is going to add the word count of however long that that comment is. And then all of those are going to be extending the text format class. It's going to give us a little bit of functionality that we can use throughout each of those. So again, we're going to have the base component that's going to be decorated by these three components. And, and basically what this allows us to do is have each of these indi individual pieces of code very small, very on point in what they are trying to accomplish. So we're not trying to accomplish all these things in one in one class. We can do these things in separate classes in succession. So let's get right into it. In my app folder, I have a decorator pattern. This is just a standard Laravel project. I'm just using Laravel here for part of the convenience in terms of running the code, but really there's really nothing specific about Laravel here. We're going to do this all in straight PHP. So the first thing that I am going to create is I'm going to create this text formatter interface. And this text formatter interface is going to be um, the interface that defines what each of these decorators must implement. All right, so now that we have this interface, we need to define what it means to be a text formatter. And if we have a text formatter, we're gonna to need to format the text. So let's just create a function that says, hey, we need to format the text. This format function is going to take in a string and this is gonna be the text that's being formatted. And then finally, we're going to return a string after we get done manipulating it. So let's go ahead and let's create the base component. This base component is again, the thing that's going to be decorated. It's the thing that um, is not going to do anything, but that we will use in order to decorate it. So let's create another class. And this component is going to implement the text formatter. I'm going to have PHP storm fill in some of these methods. Okay. So this base component is going to implement the text formatter. And so really we're just going to return the text. This is the component that we are going to use to decorate. Next, let's talk about the base class that we're going to use that the decorators are going to extend. And so this is going to allow us so that we can just not have to create some boilerplate code. So let's go ahead and let's create that class. We're going to name this text format. And this text format class for the constructor is going to take in a text formatter. This text format is also going to implement text formatter. And what this sole purpose of this class is to do is call this text formatter format text. And the purpose of this is to take in one of those text formatters and simply call the format text on that formatter. This is what's going to allow us to chain in succession all the decorators because we're, we're calling whatever is passed in, we're calling that 
down here and we're returning it. So let's build out the trim decorator. The trim decorator is going to extend this class. And it's going to override and what we need to do here is because we're extending something, we're going to call parent format text first, and we're going to assign that to a variable. And again, what this allows us to do is because we're going to be chaining these with multiple decorators, we need to call the parent and the parent is going to call the previous decorator before that and so on. And so with the trim, all we have to do is call trim on text. And it's going to run the parent format text, and then it's going to trim the text. So let's look at what this looks like so far if we were starting to decorate this out. So here I have, let's just say this is a comment on a ticket. And what we have here is we've got some extra space here. We've got some extra space at the end. We've got, it looks like, a mention of you know someone's name and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this text and for each decorator we're going to transform the text so let's start out with our base and that's going to be a new base component this is the thing that we are going to use to decorate And then again, this base component, let's click into this. This base component simply implements text formatter, but does nothing on the text. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call, actually we're going to call base. We're going to echo this out. So base format text. We're going to include the text from above. And then let's go ahead and run this. So we can see that this does indeed have some extra space at the end here. See just that little bit right here on the right. Let's add a decorator. Let's add the trim decorator to this. So I'm going to add a couple end of lines here. And now using that base, let's create a trim decorator. And for this trim decorator, we're going to give it the base. And we're going to echo out trim decorator format text. And again, we're going to pass in the same text that we were passing in from up above. And let's see what this looks like. Let's see if this one has any extra space. We can tell that this one doesn't have any extra space. I'm going to copy this and just paste it in a comment below so it's easy to see. So what we can see here is actually there's, you know, there's a couple end of lines here. This one has the extra space here. And this one does not. The trim worked. So let's take a look at if we wanted to decorate it with a mention. So again, we're going to add another decorator here but first we need to create that decorator so a decorator looks like this so let's create the class this class is going to extend the text format just like the other one we are going to override format texts and we need to return a string just like our interface says so we need to call parent format text because again, since we're decorating multiple things here, we need to make sure that we're continuously calling that. And then in this particular piece, we're going to use a Laravel helper class called string or str. And for this, this has a method called replace. And so what we can do is we can search for at Nick and we can replace it with a link. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that. 
user slash Nick. And again, so I'm just hard coding this. You know, if this were something like a real application, you might be looking for anything that has an at symbol. And then you might run a loop to find with, you might run a loop on any of those to find all the usernames that are in there and then replace all those with a string. But for this particular case, because I just wanted to show and make it easy, I'm just hard coding at Nick and with Nick here. But your use case might look a little different than this. Then lastly, we need to provide the text that we want to actually replace inside of. So if we look at this, again, we're placing at Nick with a link, and then let's go ahead and add that into the decorator. So we're gonna create a new mention decorator. We're going, this time we're going to pass in the trim decorator. And just to make this a little bit easier to read, I'm going to import these classes. Let's add a couple end of lines here. And then let's go ahead and I'll put this to the screen as well. This time we're gonna be calling the mention decorator. Let's get rid of this. And so we can see here, there's a pattern that start to happen that the trim decorator is passing in base. Now the mention decorator is taking in the trim decorator. And this is passing in each one of these into the next. Let's take a look at the output. So now we can see that Nick at Nick was replaced with a link. And we can see that the trim was also working because now we only have just the one end of line here, whereas we have two over here on the original one. So our final decorator is going to be a word count decorator. Again, this is just to show that, um, you know, what's possible with the decorating and kind of get in the habit of seeing what this looks like if we were to add more. Word count decorator. This one is also going to extend text format just like the other ones. We're going to call parents. And for this one, because we don't want the word count to be right up next to any text, we're actually going to add a end of, end of line here. And then Laravel has a built-in word count function on their string helper. So I'm just going to use that and I'm going to give it text. So this makes it really simple to kind of see like what's going on in each of these classes. Now let's use this decorator and add it on to the end. Word count decorator. And we're going to pass in the mention decorator. And for this last one, we're going to echo out the word count decorator format text. So now at the end, we should see the amount of words that are in here. And that is 16. Let's make this a little bit better. And we can say word count. Let's 
copy and paste this so it's easier to read. We can see the natural progression of each of these decorators. This first one, again, is nothing is touched. This is just showing you what we have. This second one removed any extra white space. The third one added this hyperlink. And the last one added the word count. The big picture here is that let's say we were displaying comments on a page and we need to do specific things. Let's say there's, let's say we want to prevent from cross-site scripting attacks. We could write another decorator for that and then just add it into the chain of decorators. Now, when we start talking about things with a bigger application, perhaps you're working on a team, it's going to be really important that all of this code, let's say you had the trim, let's say you had the mention, let's say you had the word count, let's say you had the cross-site scripting, all in one class. What ends up happening is that class becomes very large and very difficult to test. Now, if we wanted to go and test this mention decorator, all we have to do is make sure that the output, because we're, you know, we're, we guarantee that a string is coming out of here, we can just test the output of this one particular class. But if we were to put all of this not separated out into separate classes, you end up having to touch the core business logic every time you want to add or change the formatting of that comment that's being, you know, uh, manipulated. So in this case, all we would have to do, let's just say this was in some kind of service class, we just add another decorator. And we just add another decorator by looking like this. So if we didn't have all these echoes in here, it becomes really clean. And we'll just echo it at the end. So we can see that, you know, if we're in a team environment, it's really important that we think about what the developer experience looks like when you're working on a team. This to me, if you're on a team, shows a clear progression of what's happening here. We've got a base, we're passing the base into trim, then we've got a mention, and then we've got a word count. And each time we can see that we're passing these things in. So we know that these are happening one after another after another. And then finally we output the text. This could be like in a blade file or in your API, you're returning the comment. Again, really important that this would be a part of like the service class. Instead of that service class being one giant service or class that just has all this logic combined in it. And that's that's the biggest thing here is that we're using this pattern to separate out these different pieces of functionality that can happen on their own. One last piece that I wanted to mention about the decorator pattern is that it may look very similar to the chain of responsibility pattern. And one of the main differences between the chain of responsibility and the decorator pattern is that the decorator pattern will always go through all of the decorators, whereas chain of responsibility, you can actually pause or stop in the middle of the chain. So that's gonna be the main difference between the two. Thank you so much for watching my video. Feel free to drop a comment below on how you're using design patterns in your own application. That'd be awesome to hear about how other people are doing these different design patterns. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm happy to continue making these videos, and I hope you found this video useful.